Okay, so today we are going to be making a deer meat and vegetable pie. Um, so the deer meat is some um, deer steaks that I cooked yesterday in the slow cooker and the juice in there is some beech wine, um, some spring onions, some, uh, if you see the little black seeds in there, I don't know if you can see them floating around in there, they're lamb's quarter seeds. So these steaks cooked for about, I don't know, maybe 18 hours. We ate some of them yesterday and the rest we're going to chop up and we're going to put in for the pie filling and we'll thicken the juice up as well. So that is the main filling. And the vegetables we are going to be using are some red pepper. Now, these aren't from the garden. Um, that I didn't get a whole lot of peppers this year from the garden, but when we do buy peppers, I do like to buy organic. So what we're going to do, I started the process there. All we're going to do is just chop them into small, well, small rustic dice, I should say. And that's as good enough as, as we need that. And I have some parsnip bottoms um, that I cut off our rose parsnips the other day. The reason why I cut them off is I find that these burn um, quicker than the bigger pieces cook so I either use these in soup um, or a stew but in this case we're just gonna chop them up and throw them into our, um, our steak pie. So just take those ends off they're a little bit gross. Um, and anything that doesn't look the best. I haven't peeled these. Um, they've had a good scrub, so I don't see the point in having to peel them. So again, with the parsnips, we'll just finish up taking the softer, not as nice looking tops and bottoms off them. Like so. Get rid of that. And all we're going to do with these is we are going to, I'll just move the camera down a little bit because you're probably out of shot there for a lot of that, um, is we're just going to again dice the parsnips up into rough sort of dice. Don't get too stressed out about having it all uniform size or anything like that. Just don't worry about that sort of stuff. Um, just get it all chopped up. So chop all those parsnip bottoms up into chunks, smallish little chunks. If you get a piece sort of that size, then I tend to just cut that in half. And that can join the pepper there. Now, as I've mentioned in a previous video, is always prepare the garlic in advance. Now, this garlic has already been squished, uh, but not chopped as yet. So we will just take that out. There's a little baby clove there. He's kind of cute. And this one isn't squished enough, so we'll give him... A little squish over here and this one needs a little bit more too so we just get our garlic out there on the board I'm not putting a lot of garlic in this pie um, we do use a whole heap of garlic in most of our dishes um, and I'm also not going to chop it on my wooden board I actually prefer to chop it down here now I know it blunts your nice sharp knife using a glass board, but uh, I there's nothing worse than chopping a piece of bread or having something, you know, on here and it has a garlic flavour. That's kind of gross and not very nice. So I tend to chop things like garlic and onion um, on this board here that I have on the countertop. Take that little piece of skin out there. And again, the garlic is in no small fashion. It's just roughly chopped. That also goes on top of the pepper and the parsnip. 
Now we do have onions in the meat already here. So all I'm going to do is just put in one small to medium sized onion. And I'm just going to change my knife to this guy. I prefer this knife for onions. And all I'm going to do is just simply take the skin off. Now the onions are from the garden and the garlic was from the garden and the pepper were not unfortunately but the deer meat was local deer um, so you know everything is from around here other than the peppers and the wine was produced on the property too we made that from our own um, beech trees which we have the beech leaf wine that goes out really really good so all we're going to do is we're just going to chop this onion up again into kind of a rough um, dice. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there's lots of nice flavour. So that goes on top of our other ingredients, our peppers and parsnips and garlic. And I'll just do this other half. And then we can get to looking at what's the the meat is what's going on with the meat there. And my eyes are watering because these uh, onions from the garden are super super strong. I'm just going to nip over and wash my hands quickly. There we go. So. The other ingredient I'm going to put into our uh, pie is obviously the meat, but also some little new potatoes that I'm going to sort out shortly. So we're going to get our meat and we're just going to pop him on a plate. have to excuse me, I'm doing this video quickly because uh, we have people due home from school very, very shortly. So we're just going to take the pieces of meat out of the gravy. These beautiful, nice big pieces of deer steak. And I mean, look at the size of that for a piece of meat. I mean, that you just can't get any nicer. And, you know, this is all, I mean, look at the colour, you know, that's been stewing for, you know, hours and hours and hours. And it's just really is just falling to pieces as I try and pick it up. So what we do with the meat is we're just going to, you know, we're not trying to shred it up, although that is what's happening. We're just trying to, you know, chunk it, I suppose, into pieces that we'll mix in with the gravy. And even cold, you know, it's it looks extremely appetising. So all we're doing is we're just shredding up the meat. And, you know, that would go really nice with some onions and some pepper and some mustard um, in between two slices of white bread, folks, I can tell you. So there is the deer meat. That isn't all of it. We still have some in here. Now, as you can see, hanging off the bottom here, there is a little bit of fat. Now, if this was lamb or pork or any other meat, I wouldn't worry about that. I would just leave that on. But because we are using white-tailed deer, we will take it off because white-tailed deer fat or tallow is not very pleasant at all. It's got a very, very high melting point. So it doesn't melt very well. And with lamb, sometimes if you have a lamb dinner, you get all this white fat all around the plate. And tallow does the same thing, but it just doesn't have the best taste. So all we're gonna do as well is we have a little marrow bone here. And I'm just going to dig around in there and I've just pushed the marrow out. Just give him a tap on the plate there. 
and this is our little chunk of marrow and I will add that in there because that has got some serious goodness for you. So I am going to finish up um, with the meat and I will then head off over to the stove where we're just going to fry up the onions and the garlic and the peppers and the parsnips. I will also have the potatoes peeled and chopped ready to go as well so I will bring you back when we've done that. We're over at the stove and I'm just going to fry some of the vegetables. So we have some bacon fat here, um, bacon fat that came off some bacon that we were um, yeah. also doing. Um, and yes, we do have good neighbours around here to get all of this stuff. But we do trade for it too. We do trade vegetables um, and you know things that other people don't have. So, so we're going to put a couple of chunks of bacon fat into our pan and this is solid because it's just come out of the freezer. So I'm just trying to get another little piece of that in there and that will give our um, vegetables and meat and gravy a really good flavour. So all we're going to do is we're just going to heat that fat up, melt that nice fat in there and we are going to throw in our vegetables. So we have our peppers, our garlic, our onion, our parsnips and they all go in the pan. And my potatoes which I have chopped up into you know reasonably good size cubes they will also go in shortly but I just want to get the vegetables just coated up in the bacon fat there to start the cooking process down and then we will put the potatoes in um, with the stock that came off the meat um, we may need to add a little bit more water um, because I don't think I have enough for the whole thing there. So we are literally just giving the vegetables a coat in the bacon fat. Not so much to cook them, but just to get the pores open to absorb all that nice flavour that we have in there. And I'm going to add a little bit of summer savoury from the garden. This goes really well with the DNA. So a good pinch of summer savoury to go in there. It's always nice to use fresh, dry herbs in your cooking. Um, you know, you can do a little herb garden in a small little area you don't have to have a huge garden to, to grow anything like that so now that they have been cooking for a few moments i'm going to throw in the potatoes and because they're chunky i will cook these until they are kind of semi soft semi cooked um, not that they're going to go to mush because again the floury potatoes as mentioned earlier in the video I did on the pantry um, they will just turn into a mush and we do want a little bit of bite into the potatoes so again just turning them around in the pan just to get them coated in the fat and all I'm going to do then is throw in our stock all this nice deer stock. Try not to get too much of the meat in. So we'll just use these spoons for garlic. So everything goes in. There is a few little bits of meat going in there, but that's not to worry. We have a few bits left up in the in the bowl there, but that can just go on the plate with the other meat. 
so I can see already that I'm not going to have enough liquid in here, not when I put the quantity of meat in. So all I'm going to do is just turn my heat up and add some water just to cover the vegetables well, like that. And the next thing I am going to do is I am going to transfer this pan over to my wood stove because I don't want to be using the electric when I have a wood stove blazing over there and I will cook this until the potatoes are tender then we can add in our meat and we can thicken this up and then the filling for the pie is done all we need to do is make our gravy so we will get back to you when we're at that point the vegetables and the broth have been on the wood stove now for about 15 or 20 minutes. So it's time to thicken that up. Just put that over there and Aspen's making a cheese sandwich on the fire as well. So all I have here is I have some arrowroot. Um, you can use flour and water, but I like arrowroot because it... The sauce doesn't get a coloration that I find you get with flour. Now I may need to use a little bit more, so we'll just give that a little stir in and that'll thicken up nicely. And into there I'm also going to add the meat, try not to drop it all in because it's kind of awkward one-handed. Excuse that. I'll scrape that out in a minute, folks. Don't worry, that won't go to waste. So this is our filling all done, and the gravy will start to thicken up on the stove there. And I will put the lid back on, and we shall head off over to make the pastry, and we will see you over there. Time to make the pastry for the pie and what we're trying to achieve is a flaky pastry that is in between a nice short crust, a flaky pastry and a puff pastry without all the hard work. So what I have here is I have 14 ounces of just plain white flour and when I make pastry I like to use half the amount of butter to the flour. I used to do more than that and I found that it would be a little bit too greasy. So my method is we take the butter and we coat it with some of the flour. One, so it doesn't butter your hands all up and it just makes it a little bit easier. So we just grate the butter into the flour and every couple of grates we just dip back in like so and so we're getting nice long grates of butter dip the butter square in and then carry on yeah and instead of budgie today sparrow is making an appearance on camera because aspen is home from school Oh, and I think I might hear somebody else coming too. So, oh, yeah, there's Budgie in the background. Anyway, so I'm just finishing up here, just grating this butter in. It takes a little bit of an effort, but the end result is a really, really nice flaky uh, pastry. Hi, baby sparrow. This is baby sparrow. Hi, baby sparrow. So the girls have been busy making their sparrows. Mommy, so anyway, you. all of our butter is now grated. Oh, mommy sparrow, not baby sparrow. All of our butter is grated into our flour. And it's a very simple process. Oops, got greasy on slightly. As you can see, all grated in there nicely. So without much processing, we just mix our butter lift it up in the air a little bit just to get all of those buttery grated bits all covered in flour and then all we do then is we add water and we don't 
overwork this pastry that is very very important we just add water to bind and it's ready to use you can put it in the fridge I never put it in the fridge I just you know make it and then I use it straight away so I will get my water and I will get this ready to be divided and rolled and we'll bring you back so here is the pastry and as you can see it's a very rough bind um, and if you look closely enough you can actually see the little dots of butter in there. So what we need to do now is we need to divide the pastry into two parts, one for the bottom and one for the top. Now if this was just a short crust pastry I would roll it all out, put the bottom in my pie tin and reassemble what's left over for the top but because we want a nice flaky kind of puff pastry we don't want to overwork this so we have to do each piece separately now this is where it can get a little tricky is you have to kind of judge how much you're going to need for the top and you can get this slightly wrong you end up having to patch it which I have done which isn't a huge huge problem but it's not one of the best things that you want to be doing it's it kind of this is a bit of a pain so i'm hoping that i have enough here for the bottom of the pie so we're going to flour our board and using our fingers just start making a circle of the pastry and we're going to roll it out like so and we don't want it too thick we want it reasonably thin um, because we want it to obviously cover the pie bottom but we want it to be thin enough that it cooks properly and it's not raw so we will just carry on rolling that out until we I kind of think we're about there for the size and shape of the tin, which my tin is well used as you can see. So we just put that on the top there and I can see just from that that we need to roll out a little bit more. And I was on the verge there of almost not having enough pastry so there will be a little left over. So roll them out a little bit more. And an easy way of doing it is I fold it up, lay the pie tin on and half roughly in the middle and then just fold it out. Now this pastry is really easy to use. It's not a, it's got a lot of butter in it but it's not so short that you can't actually use it and you end up getting frustrated you know some pastries I've used in the past have been so short that you can't even roll them they just fall to pieces so that was the oven going off there so I am going to repeat the process with the top and then we will bring the meat over and we will fill up the pie and we will get the finished product in the oven the pie filling is nice and thick and I will lift that up for you so you can see how nice and thick that is. And the potatoes are tender but they're not mushy. The meat still has some bite to it and all of those nice vegetables are all coated in that lovely thick gravy. So all we need to do now is we spoon the mixture into my pie tin and we're going to have extra which is really really great so we're doing an emma again here and we spoon it right in there fill it right up to the top so we have a nice deep pie filling and just spread it a little bit around don't worry if it comes over the edge like that I'm just going to root around in here for a couple more potatoes just to plonk in there and that will probably do on that front. So the rest. Now out of that you know you can see how much is left there you know 
There's another good meal there with some potatoes or some rice or we could turn that into something else. I have leftovers from the meat off this yesterday as well. So all I'm going to do next is we are just going to use a little bit of water just around. Hold on, I just need to grab some more. We are just going to go around the edges with some water. You could use egg white, I don't bother, I just use water. It does exactly the same thing. And we have our pastry lid all rolled out, ready to go on. So we just plonk that on the top there, as you can see. And we press it down around the edge. And then we're going to take a sharp knife and go in here and just take the knife around the edge of the pie like that almost there and this spare pastry i have somebody next to me here that's waiting for that day she's going to make some nice yummy treats so all we do is we just go around the pie edge and we just press that down with our thumb and that seals the pie in. And I always like to go around twice just to make absolutely sure that it is sealed. So just whiz around, round, 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 and we're about there. And we will cut two little holes in the top of our pie, just so the air can escape and cook that all through. Now, if you wanted to, you could put an egg wash on the top of this to colour the pastry. Again, I don't bother doing that. I don't really have the need to do that because they're so crisp but nice anyway so it's quite a buttery pastry so this pie is going to go in the oven it's preheated to 370 degrees fahrenheit and i apologize i don't know what that is in degrees celsius so we will pop this in the oven and when it is done and on the table we will take a look to see what it's like the pie has now finished cooking and I'll try and get you in close so you can see the pastry layers. Focus, there you go. You can see that the pastry layers are like puff pastry and that is really because we didn't overwork the pastry when we were making it and we didn't double roll it which is really important. So all there is to do now with this pie is to take it to the table and serve it up with the rest of the supper. There's the finished pie. If you like what you see, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And the guys are looking forward to eating it.